Morning everybody, back in the Megaspace um, Mercedes for two drops local, just back on the bay waiting to load. Forecast is for snow, it's um, it's just coming down very, very lightly. It's, it's actually stopped a bit from what it was a minute ago, but you can see from that uh, last clip that it is very cold. There's ice on the uh, on the extremities and stuff this morning, but it is uh, zero degrees on the temperature gauge. But we'll see what happens after we've done these two drops up in um, Leeds area, ring the office, find out what's next. The snow has finally arrived. It's starting to come down. I'm heading south, uh, but I'm not sure whether the forecast is better or worse for down there. But it keeps having these flurries. That's probably the strongest we've had That's uh, for the last sort of five or 10 minutes. Anyway, uh, tip the two drops in Leeds and went just round the corner for a reload that happened to be at the wrong place or that the address they'd been given was the wrong place for the collection. So I was only three miles away anyway. Nipped across there, backed on a bay, got a break in. Loaded in just over three quarters of an hour. Job done. Heading south now as I say. Got to find somewhere to park for tonight and could really do with some grub. I can get diesel tomorrow. I should have enough to get me there today. Then I've got a full tank that will last me the next couple of days. Take the second exit. So let's see what this snow does. That's the huge Amazon warehouse at the side of the um, M1 down near Milton Keynes. It's absolutely massive. Problem is, uh, uh, to throw another fly in the ointment, um, they've said that parking at this place is extremely tight. So that's it in front of us now you can just see over there and if it's already full then I'm not going to have much choice but to go and try and find somewhere Take the second exit. on an industrial estate anyway towards Bedford. but let's see how we go on good move there highway maintenance Yeah, like I say, last time I was here, I was uh, again on for Ricky B and Lee, like one of my previous videos, and um, it was just to fill up using key fuels. It does look like there is a couple of spaces, so should be okay. Let's see what the score is in a minute. need fuel so what I might do is yeah what I'm gonna do it doesn't look that busy that I'm not gonna get somewhere to be honest so what I'm gonna do is fuel up while I'm here and then it's done morning uh, done all my daily checks and everything's okay, all good, still full of fuel, full of ad blue, curtains intact, very very pleased with that. So that was worth paying for last night, uh, since oh, this is apparently a bit of a ripe area for load theft, diesel theft etc. Uh, I've just got that, um, the Volvo parked at the back of me, uh, as I said it is fairly tight and because I've driven in last night, 
it sort of paid off. Uh, now, if I'd have been setting off early, I would have reversed in to make it easier to manoeuvre out because I, I think you would have struggled otherwise. But the spaces are mega, mega tight. As you can see, there's only the, barely the width of the road to try and swing round. So, um, I'm just, I've done my daily checks, like I said, but uh, I, I'm just going to have a quick wander round in case that guy is going, then I can back into his space and I'll be able to pull away cleanly, dead easy. But otherwise, I'm just going to have to screw it round on the blind side a bit and have a check to make sure that I'm clear of him before I can go. I'm only eight miles from my drop point, about 20 minutes, probably 15. Uh, it tends to over exaggerate this sat nav, which is a good thing in a way. Look at that sunrise. Brilliant, just as I go to show you it. There you go. Well, that was good. She thought I was the 1430 booking, and in fairness, it is only 7:30, and I'm uh, I'm actually a 9 a.m. booking. But we got all that sorted, and I used to deliver to uh, DCs for uh, for the likes of this before. Every bay over there would have been packed with drivers waiting to tip, and now you don't get that in DCs anymore. Fair play, they've pulled the fingers out. There's three of us live tipping uh, this side of the Goods Inn office, which is the big building there, you can see. And we're all on bays. How long it takes them to tip, I don't know. But like I say, I've, I've been to these places before. Every one of them parking bays opposite would have just been chocker with, uh, with people that's been waiting their ages to tip. Anyway, we'll see how long it takes. Time for a bit of breakfast. Well, it's 12 o'clock and I've been here since half seven probably tipped about uh, 10 o'clock yeah about 10 o'clock but there's been um, two pallets sent extra in error and two pallets under delivered so I got all my paperwork back that was wrong I had to go back and sort the paperwork out then the pallet quantities were wrong so I had to go and sort that out then I had to wait for the customer to come back to my hall here and tell me what they wanted to do with the two pallets. Anyway, he's just rung me now saying at 12 o'clock that they've got no answer, so he wants me to pull out and uh, I'm gonna drop the trailer just up the road at another customer's and sort it out later. So, I'm now round at the exit barrier where you have to enter your code. Unfortunately, because my code was given to me with my notes at 10 o'clock, it's now expired. So I'm trying to get in touch with Goods In to get me a new code to get out. There's the Amazon building that we passed last night. You can see the scale of it now at the side of the M1 here. Quite a nice looking building, actually. Bay number 269 or something there. Just uh, in these roadworks now, heading north to Northampton. Um, the, the the goods in office eventually answered down at um, uh, Kempston there and opened the barrier for me. Didn't ask what the delay was. Didn't ask what I was doing. Where I was nothing. Just opened the barrier. So it almost defeats the object of giving out passcodes to get out anyway. But I'm on my way and it's. 14 miles left to the um, trailer swap up at Northampton, which is just off the M1 motorway, so that's nice and easy to get to. Then I have to ring the chaps and find out where the reload is from. Couple of nice looking units there. But look at the number plate on that one. Lorry. Cool as. That was short and sweet. Into Northampton, drop the empty off, or the one with two pallets on, pick the empty up, and back onto the M1, heading south again. So a 40 mile round trip just to get me back to where I should have been empty. I'm then heading further south to London to pick up a load for Yorkshire and Humberside 
for delivery tomorrow. There's the pretty spe spectacular Queen Elizabeth II bridge. After one Dartford crossing. Turn left at the roundabout, taking the first exit onto London Road, West Zurich. Looking good in the sunshine, actually. Nearly at my drop point, just half a mile to go. take me to half eight tonight it's half four it was half four uh, and I started about half seven this morning so that would have made a lovely 13 hour day so I'm just going to um, do a couple of hours up the road and then have a quick look at where to sort of park what sort of area is good but my first drop's not till half seven tomorrow morning three drops in total um, so I even two or three hours up the road tonight I'll be I'll be within shouting distance of it in the morning so it's no problem. We were looking alright for a while. Unfortunately we've slowed right down in the roadworks around Northampton where I was earlier on today. All this to narrow it down to one lane. causing delays and I'm not going to pass judgement yet everybody slows down to have a look so nobody's injured and everybody's okay Wednesday, day three, uh, packed it to Markham Vale last night, not too clever really, um, had a security guard come round taking some pictures of the truck for some reason, there was no yellow lines or anything that I could see, but uh, here we are, diesel and everything intact this morning, curtains okay, load okay, so running just a bit behind because of, um, by the time I parked up yesterday it wasn't worth running any further over a 13 hour day and having a, a 15 hour day and a 9 hour rest because it, I, would have, I would have been like an hour and a half early for the booking um, I'd have been there at 6 and I don't think they'd open that early anyway so I um, stopped there at 11 off did my checks and set off this morning just up near Sheffield now should be there in about 20 minutes uh, which like I say just put me about half an hour late I'm sure they'll be okay with it hopefully um, that'll be the first one and then another one quite close and then another one over in Humberside over near Hull at the moment, that's the third drop off, uh, an hour ahead of booking time, so probably a couple of hours ahead of schedule. Heading to just outside York for a load for Kent. So that should take care of the rest of today and tomorrow. Hopefully get a load on tomorrow afternoon being Thursday for tipping out Friday back in Yorkshire. Job done. Well, both ways that the sat nav were taking me said unsuitable for HGVs, and it's brought me this way. And there's a sign that says road closed. So I pulled up 
and another wagon driver stopped me and he said are you looking for roll on yeah that's the way to go you can get through don't worry and there is passive places but jesus this hand this 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 can't be the regular route in i don't believe this because there'd, there'd be other trucks and the road would be a bit clearer so uh christ ditches on one on each side hardly anywhere to pass road hasn't been gritted ice all over right laugh it is very pretty though even that tree's hanging low Not so often you see an old um, railway station and level crossing and everything like that. See the signal boxes all shut up. Anyway, loaded over at uh, near York. Um, uh, what a pig of a place to get to, but very, very beautiful scenery and some very narrow lanes. Uh, luckily, I found that other driver saying, yeah, you're all right to go down there, mate, carry on. Otherwise, I would have had serious doubts. But um, all worked out well in the end got there a bit of a messy yard to try and get sorted in as well because they had conflicting signs one said go down here and another one said private road and you couldn't see the other sign until you were facing the wrong way and anyway got sorted got loaded strapped up and we're heading for london north london and kent here we go the train's just gone through Station's obviously still open because the train stopped there to let it let passengers on or off or whatever it's doing. Anyway, the signal box is certainly shut. Town centre. <laughs> Some town. <laughs> well, we're down near Peterborough and these are bizarre weather conditions. As you can see, that big glowing ball over there is the sun. But it's snowing, or trying to snow. It's eased off a bit. It was uh, it was heavy a moment ago. As quick as that, it clears again. But I just wanted to show you that uh, sun's going down over there. Yeah, the clouds earlier. Just come out a bit now. Beautiful. Packed up in Biggleswade. Uh, I've just been looking at my um, directions for tomorrow morning and uh, drop one falls inside the low emission zone. So I was hoping to get there just before seven o'clock because the guy said he opens at seven. Um, but I can't go in to, to inside the low emission zone until um, after seven so kick off from here uh, i'll get my card in at six do my daily checks set off about ten past quarter past six uh and it says it's about three quarters of an hour down there so that should get me nice and steady down there for seven five past seven uh, and then i can pull off the north circular and onto the road that i need to be on to get there for maybe quarter past seven which should be fine uh, the next one then is round over the Dartford Bridge again. So I'll hopefully get a chance to show you that. Uh, and then see what reload we've got. Morning! It's day four, Thursday morning. He's a right load on here, this fella. With a little van. Right up to the roof. Good Six miles. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're at the bottom of the A1, just underneath the Hatfield Galleria at the moment, heading into London. I can't believe how busy this A1 is with all the people going in. It's only half six, uh, we've just gone half six in the morning. It's packed, it's like the M1. Used to be. 
but it, yeah, it's chock a block. There's loads and loads of cars. Uh, I'm, I need I need fuel at some stage today, so I'm thinking, uh, seeing as how I need to kill a bit of time before I get to this drop point, I don't want to get there before seven because of this low emission zone malarkey. I'm going to call that South Mim Services and Top Up because I know it's easy to get to uh, the pumps and everything rather than trying to find a um, garage on the North Circular or somewhere like that. Just on uh, Brent Cross flyover at the moment. You can just see in the distance there, yeah, it's a bit hazy, but you can just see the um, the, the big arch thing that's something to do with Wembley Stadium, I'm not sure. Old Jaguar up there, look. Uh, but it says uh, one point one and a half miles um, of major sort of roads like, like this, <laughs> or chock a block. Um, and it's only 1.9 to my destination, so pretty good really. So it should be just at the end of this road is a big garden centre. It, it must be fairly big because this, there was even a signpost for it a couple of miles back. On the, or just as you came off the North Circular Road, so um, it's near the Welsh Harp Sailing Centre or Sailing Club or something. I think there's a big reservoir just at the back. But anyway, I looked on Google Earth last night and these roads look, um, they, well, they actually look narrower than this, so I'm pleasantly surprised. But at the end, there should be a bit of a roundabout and I'm hoping that the garden centre is signposted from there. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, and it says to pull into the garden centre and then, uh, looks like it's just a beer look. Uh, and then back into the, um, the delivery point which is a lawn place within the garden centre. Anyway, here we go. Uh, it says this way. Well. Oh well. I just want you to clip that gate on the way in because that's fairly narrow. I'm gonna have to go on to the roundabout here. He said the gates were shut last night at quarter to six, otherwise I think I may have been able to get in uh, in here last night. Which would have been handy if I'd have just had an hour's extra time I could have parked up here. But anyway, I was all right where I was anyway and I needed fuel, so... Oh dear. I bet it's called Welsh Harp, something to do with the shape of the lake or something like that. Can't think of another reason. Nice and narrow here. It says garden centre anyway, so just as long as I can keep traction up here, it should be okay. Did break a bit there, so I want to keep going. Up you come, old girl. Thing is, because it's automatic, try to change gear there, look. And again, and as soon as it changes gear, it spins the back wheels up. Instead of just stopping where you are, I should have overridden it to uh, manual, but anyway. Here we are, it should be on my right as I go through here, and I should be able to back in. There we go, that's where I'm going. Well, what a great set of lads. Um, as soon as I could open my curtains, they would have had me tipped. So, I've been here, I don't know, about 20 minutes, I suppose, time I'd take my straps off and 
got everything sorted there, so that's good. Uh, next one's round at whoa, seven oaks, so trip round the North Circular. Onto the A13, pick up the M25 over the bridge and round to the next one. Looks massive, the next place. Yeah, I was just going to say about that uh, last drop there. Uh, the postcode took me to that street that I went in on, which was fine. But if you hadn't Googled it, um, you wouldn't have known that at the end of that road, in that um, like sports complex and all the rest of it that was there, that that garden centre existed. You could see it on Google Earth, obviously. Uh, so it, it got me thinking, in the old days, it used to come down here. Uh, first of all, you'd have to load your vehicle yourself the night before with maybe 12 or 14 drops. Um, and then set off early in the morning to come down here with no sat-nav. There was, there was no sat-nav then, it wasn't a thing. No, no smartphones, no phones in the cabs, no night eaters, no bunk. Um, it just fold down seats and a sleeping bag. But then you'd have to come down here. Oh, and you'd have to root it yourself as well, so you could load it in a, in a you know, a, a totally wrong sequence if you didn't get it right. And you'd end up doing millions of miles. But anyway, you'd have to come down here then, and uh, you'd have an a, an a to Z book, a little book, with the maps of all the streets in it. And you'd, you'd, you'd have the map in one hand, and the gear lever in the other, because there were no, there were no automatic trucks. Uh, trying to steer with your knees and and looking out for one-way streets and low bridges that were marked on and and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, just just looking at a little book. How I did it, I don't know, <laughs> but I did, and got a, got away with it and got done. Anyway, we're, we're up on the North Circle and not much happening at the minute apart from these horrendous queues. I don't know, I, I, I can't see all these being key workers and essential journeys. Because, my God, there's, it's as busy as I've ever seen it. There's hundreds of cars, thousands of cars. Anyway, that's London for you. Got this fella begging here with his leg on the wrong way around, look. I don't know whether it was, but that actually looked to be a real leg. So his his foot must have been broken. Or jeez. Well, I've been stuck on this uh, A406 North Circular Road for an hour and a half and done 18 miles. So that's an average of 12 miles an hour. How the Londoners then cock and ease uh, get, uh, get, get through each day having to do this just beyond me. It's actually slowed down from my average 12 mile an hour to 20 miles in two hours, so that's average 10 miles an hour just to do 20 miles. Two hours! I don't know what the delay is, but it says there's a slip rod here that goes round onto the A13, but nobody seems to be moving on it, so I don't know if it's traffic light controlled or it's broken or whatever. As I suspected, there was a car broken down or something. It looked like it hit the barrier because they were replacing the barrier and uh, there was a load of sand or absorbent stuff over the road that they were clearing up, so... Uh, and it's just been on the radio that there was a car broken down, so anyway. Um, that was the reason for the delay. Two of the lanes were closed of the three, so everybody was trying to get onto. There's the Queen Elizabeth Bridge, Queen Elizabeth Second Bridge, Dartford Crossing, just in front of us. The place I actually loaded from the other day is um, is just over there, actually. Uh, if you could look over the edge, you'd probably see it. Yeah, yeah, it's there, so we're just after that Texaco garage. Because <laughs> you could see the bridge while I was getting loaded. But anyway.
Anyway, here we are, up on the bridge. I need to remind these guys, because this is a hired vehicle, I think, that uh, I've been over this crossing today so that they pay the toll charge in case it's not registered. Otherwise, the fine is more than the toll. And he said, and then go find the office. But uh, just thought I'd show you them buildings there. Eh? Oh, gun towers and something. Well, good. Reels and reels and reels of paper. But uh, looks like this is what I'm getting for tomorrow morning. Back up to base, Scarborough. All these old buildings in the docks look fascinating. That one there with the big crest on the roof. These old, uh, I don't know what they'd be, whether they'd be accommodation or maybe rope works, could be anything, I don't know. Fascinating, fascinating. And there's one down here with a big uh, cannon and stuff outside, so let's see if I can show you that in a minute. so quiet what are they, all these buildings what they'll have been years and years ago eh? that one there and this one in front here looks a massive anchor outside it cannons might have been the dock master's house could be that all them up there time this was the um, this was the northbound bow and the other side where you can see the rigid going there was the southbound bow uh, and it was it was obviously one way each side It's fairly sharp because I'm running out of memory on my card. Um, nothing to report yesterday really. Most of the journey was spent in the dark so I didn't have anything to show you. Um, but it was a long stretch. Uh, went up to Birchanger Services, uh, grabbed something to eat there and uh, slotted a 30 minute break in and then did sort of three hours north from there. Ended up um, Doncaster, Rotherham area. So I parked there last night, uh, not a right good spot really. Uh, up early this morning, uh, kicked off um, six o'clock. I was in Scarborough for half seven. Uh, matey boy came out at just before eight o'clock and said you're not booked in while nine, but he tipped me anyway. So I ran to the depot, fuel up, swap trailers. They want me to pick up a taller trailer to head back to Bradford. And all I've got to do is make sure that uh, all the bays are loaded up with empty trailers load a couple if they want them shunt them about uh, just to sort of finish the day off but it's uh, 11 o'clock now so I'm going to be back in Bradford for half 11 probably be done early part of the afternoon job done and they want me back next week which is nice so I can leave all my kit in this vehicle saves a bit of messing about on Monday morning 
and he's going to tell me later on start time and what I'm doing on Monday. So yeah, all good. Weekend. Here we are.